So I have two options at the moment, one of which is a 64 mil depth cover, which is a depth from the rim inwards, and I also have a full disc, which goes onto the rear of the bicycle. Essentially, all you're doing is adding the aerodynamics without having to buy a whole new set of wheels. There are so many applications to composite machining, but I've got to say, this is one of the most interesting I've seen. Now, Daniel, could you first just explain to me uh, what company you represent and what these are, please? So I'm Daniel, the founder of Streamline Cycling. I make a main product, which I call the air system, which comprises of a base rim complete with hub and spokes that can be fitted quickly and easily with aerodynamic covers such as these. So I have two options at the moment, one of which is a 64 mil depth cover, which is a depth from the rim inwards, and I also have a full disc, which goes onto the rear of the bicycle. Essentially, all you're doing is adding the aerodynamics without having to buy a whole new set of wheels, because wheels these days are just expensive, really expensive. So the wheels are already really expensive. And what are you trying to achieve by, add, by, by placing these onto the wheels? So the main benefit you can get by adding these covers is aerodynamic gains. So cyclists these days are crazy about it. They're all about the minimum amount of power they can put out for the maximum speed. So by adding these covers, what it allows you to do is either put out less power for the same speed or you'll be going faster for the same power, if that makes sense. So this version here, the 64, adds a little bit of speed, but if it's too windy, you, won't, you wouldn't want to be riding these because you're going to get blown about all over the place. It's the same with the full disc. You can have these on the rear of your bike. They're going to add a ton of speed, but again, if it's too windy, you're going to get blown about. So you can remove it on days where it's blowing like a hurricane. Um, and on still days, you can add this for the, the aero benefits. So it's a bit like, I guess you see kind of TT bikes in tracks, I guess, with these crazy looking wheels with the big fat covers on, but people at, ho people at home with a standard bike can actually put these on themselves now. So there's two uses. I have two products. The main, is, the main product is the air system, which is more for racers, triathl triathletes, or time trialists, the sort of upper end. I've got another option which just features these rear covers that can fit onto any rear wheel. So anyone that owns wheels can fit the covers and they're saving a ton of money versus buying a fixed disc. Okay, and obviously there's lots of cycling happening in the UK because it's a fantastic country to be cycling in. But let's talk more about the actual manufacture of these. Now these are super thin carbon fiber. Now can you explain how you manufacture these, please? So the process to make these, I realized quickly that I needed to make a mold to make these carbon fiber parts. So first step was build a CNC. So ended up going through the process, build a CNC, ended up with a ton of questions at the end of that. But essentially the carbon fiber is laid up into these molds that I make and then you have a vacuum system that's applied. They go in the oven for an hour and they come out. After that, you need to trim them. So I have a CNC router that comes out, trims around the outside of the parts, trims the inside, and also cuts out the attachments as well. Then you fit these wee attachment parts that allow the, the covers to fit together. So they're like a little quick lock attachment. And we're here at Enmis in Glasgow, um, and it's, there's, there's a common theme I found when, when finding more out about Enmis is it brings very different high technical people working in, in innovative industries together. Now, you've partnered with Quick Grind, and how did you find out about Quick Grind? Was it through Enmis? So, I met Karima at Enmis to begin with. She put me in touch with Mark at Quick Grind, and both of them were super helpful. Because I ended up building this CNC machine, I had a thousand questions. Google is a good solution for some of those, but for some of them I had to go to Karima and Mark. More for the, the tooling from Mark's perspective, so he helped me right as I was starting up, giving me some tools to get me going. He came along, had a look at the CNC, gave me suggestions for improvements I could make, uh, helped with the tool pass and some of the feeds and speeds, etc. So both of them were super helpful to, to get me so going. So composite machining is not as well understood as standard aluminium, titanium even, steel machining. Mm -hmm. What problems were you having machining these that Mark helped to solve? So my main problem initially was actually the work holding solution. I started off with a really quite rogue solution of just holding the part in place while I was machining. So that was problem number one. So Mark gave me some of the suggestions for the vacuum system that I ended up using to hold the part in place. The second one was actually the, the tools themselves. What I was finding with the tools I was using at the moment is I'd have a lot of fray material as I was cutting. So some of the tools that he provided helped clear up that issue to start with, um, along with the tool pass. So again, for the 64s, the, the tool pass are quite complicated. So again, he helped me go through the system of working out what's going to be best, how can I speed up this process, and end up, well, leave myself with the least amount of sanding that would need done afterwards. So you want to post-process as little as exactly, possible. Yeah. And that's the most important thing, is trying to get a nice finish around it, because these are consumer parts. They need to look nice. 100%, yeah. I think it's a, it's a balance of how quickly I can make stuff, and then also the appearance of it, how well is it finished. And if we have a look at the other part as well, that's quite a complicated part. You've got two sides, so it's a clamshell, and you've got um, little kind of up-down features here. You have to go up and down with the CNC, which is 
it's quite a complex system that you wouldn't, it's not just like trimming around the outside. So there's lots of problems with these. And d did you find that Quick Grind, did they had the expertise in the composite machining that you needed? I think from Quick, Quick Grind's perspective, they've seen a lot of this stuff before. They've seen all sorts of projects. So for the tooling side of things, they were 100% on it in terms of what tools are best suited for this sort of job. Because there's a few different things going on, the, the toolpath around the edge isn't quite as complicated but uh, some of the ideas they gave me helped extend tool life. So obviously as you're cutting around the external parameter, moving the tool height-wise in the z-axis. To so use up all not, of the carbide. You're all not just ending up with one blunt section, you're actually using more of the tool and getting a little bit longer tool life. And we don't find that many suppliers work with founders of companies that are just developing brand new products. How did you feel they supported you when then they're probably used to working with established businesses who've been going maybe for 100 years? So. Overall, the experience with QuickGround and with Enmis has been excellent. They didn't need to help me. Again, I'm just a super small company. It's just me manufacturing these parts. For, so for them to, to reach out and offer tools and the assistance that they did, Mark didn't need to come to my house to help me, but he did. And in the end, it's led to me making parts faster, having longer tool life, um, and just speeding up the whole process. Mm -hmm.